Real-time voice is a clever combination of Proc Whisper Large, OpenAI GPT-40 Mini, and just regular good old-fashioned OpenAI TTS. With WebRTC voice activity detection, let's see how it works. When it begins, you just speak to it. Hey there, can you please tell me five design principles for web apps? Sure. Here are five design principles for web apps. One, user-centered design. Can you tell me more about the first one? Certainly. User-centered design, UCD, is an approach that prioritizes... Tell me about usability. Usability refers to how effectively, efficiently... Okay, thank you very much. That will be all. You're welcome. If you have any more questions... You're welcome. So, as you can see, uh, it works with a voice activity detection, and uh, it's almost real-time. The latency is about half a second to one second. I have actually built this in four different files, beginning with just the voice detection, and then just transcribing the voice, and then uh, voice activity detection, and then getting actual text response. I actually like this version very good, too. Uh, let me actually show you that. Hi there, can you please tell me a story? And in this case, we are just getting a text response. Okay, tell me another story, please. See? Okay. Uh, every time I speak, of course, I'm interrupting it. Uh, the beautiful part is we are also, we can see that the entire chat history, even if it is broken, is saved. Here, for example, uh, the, even the broken chunks are saved. So this works really well. And the fourth file is, of course, the full real-time uh, simulated speech. It works well, and this is super cheap, of course, because we're now using the real-time API. All the code files for this, along with its explanation, is actually available at my Patreon, along with 350 other projects. You can actually download it there conveniently by becoming a patron. But we will be reviewing the code. I will be reviewing the first two, uh, three files. And then the fourth one, I'll let my AI code explainer uh, explain that. So let's just begin. The really important thing here is we are using WebRTC VAD uh, library and sound device. You may have to install, aside from the requirements, FFmpeg on your system. Make sure that that is installed. But essentially, you initialize uh, WebRTC VAD and set its aggressiveness level. Here it is set to 2. Then you define some audio settings and essentially uh, have a callback which is going to uh, convert the audio format to compatible WebRTC VAD. And then uh, it just detects it like this. And you start the audio stream uh, with the sound device as input stream and just call, have a callback. So if you run this, it is actually going to type in listening every time it detects, I believe. Hi there. I don't know if you can see it, but every time uh, I'm, it detects me speaking, it actually writes voice detected. See, now it wasn't working. and. So this voice detection works well. I guess this is the main takeaway. I have to kill this. Next, uh, we are initializing our async OpenAI. This is the second file. We are initializing WebRTC VAD. Uh, optimize the audio settings. Set a buffer size limit. Prevent processing very long audio segments. Uh, set to 10 seconds of audio. Set some global variables, such as is speaking uh, and regular queue. We are going to use queue. When transcribe audio is just going to actually create a, a NumPy audio array. And uh, once we are speaking, it's going to send it to uh, OpenAI Whisper. Sorry, uh, in this case, we are using Grok with the base URL. So it's just going to return that and return the response. And we are going to use this transcribe audio in a, a, thread, uh, in a, a process thread queue. So this queue will be running uh, in a uh, async IO thread, and we call that function essentially, and we create a call recording callback, optimize the audio conversion, uh, use frame energy for additional speed and voice detection. This is just to accelerate it a little more, and then if it's speech, then we uh, set speaking to true, and we print voice detected, uh, and we uh, extend the audio buffer. Uh, until the max buffer size. 
And if there is silence, there's a silence threshold we have defined here uh, for five seconds. That happens. Then we said is speaking false uh, and clear the audio buffer. And in the main async, we run the process thread queue and optimize the stream settings with the sound device again. And with stream, we just sleep and uh, essentially either cancel the task depending on the situation uh, uh, or also print the error messages. Now with the third file, everything pretty much remains the same except when we get a transcription, we just call the get chat, chat response async method to actually make a call to GPT-40 mini and actually stream its response to the uh, terminal. That being the difference, everything else remains the same. Now the fourth line is actually quite comprehensive at almost 460 lines of code. Uh, we will now let the AI code explainer explain that. You can, of course, as I said before, download all of the source code for this from my Patreon. You can find all my projects at my website, echoive.live. Watch all the videos for free uh, related to any project that you're interested in. If you're a patron, you can click on this download code button and download the source code to any one of the projects and make it your own, build on top of it, uh, such as memory layer for LLMs. Very useful. I also, you can also check out my 1000X cursor course here, which has currently 28 chapters and over 19 hours of content. I highly recommend it if you're interested in learning how to build with cursor better. So now next uh, step is to uh, watch the code review, review by my AI Code Explainer. AI Code Explainer is also available at my Patreon. Link for everything will be in the description and the comments. This first snippet showcases the imports and initial setup of clients and parameters. Here we are preparing the necessary libraries for audio handling, timing, file operations, interaction with OpenAI's AP More. The code initializes clients for interaction with hypothetical APIs OGRUC and OpenAI, alongside setting up WebRTC's voice activity detection, VAD, which checks for speech and audio. Some audio configuration constants are defined like the sample rate and frame size to optimize the audio processing for fast and efficient real-time interactions. Importantly, global variables are set up, including the audio buffer, chat history so you can relive those meaningful conversations, and other flags to manage the flow of conversation. This snippet introduces an asynchronous function to save chat history to a file. This is crucial for keeping a record of the interactions, possibly for reviewing or improving the system, or just to reminiscence about that one insightful AI reply. The function handles creating a directory if it doesn't already exist, and writes the current timestamped conversation to a JSON file. It attempts to gracefully manage exceptions by capturing any errors during file operations and logging them in a vibrant red hue for immediate attention. In this snippet, the framework for audio management is set up. An asynchronous queue is initialized to manage the audio files ready for playback, which, just like a good DJ, ensures everything is queued up just right. The Audio Manager class is introduced to handle the playback and interruption of audio files, using Pygame to manage audio operations. The class tackles potential issues by clearing up and stopping any ongoing audio processes before starting a new one, preventing clashes that could lead to strange sonic experiences. The method detect sentence end checks string endings to see if they cap off a sentence, crucial for determining where the AI can logically take a breather before continuing. This snippet defines classes that manage the state of the conversation and handle interruptions. Conversation state keeps track of whether the system is currently speaking or processing a response, using events to asynchronously manage these states. It provides methods to interrupt and reset conversation tasks, which involve stopping audio and canceling any ongoing asynchronous tasks, sort of like slamming the brake on a runaway train. Expanding on this, thread-safe conversation state includes provisions for safe state alterations in a multi-threaded environment, ensuring you can interrupt tasks sanely, even if they are mid-loop, all without elements of the asynchronous loop mutinying against you. In this segment, we focus on the generation and playback of text-to-speech, TTS audio. The generate and play audio function takes text, performs TTS on it via an API, allegedly OpenAI in this code, 
to produce an audio file and cues it for playback. It delicately checks whether an audio interruption has been signaled before continuing each step. Simultaneously, the audio player function continuously checks the audio cue to play audio files in order, ensuring even if responses arrive out of order, they play sequentially. Handling audio in this way emulates a responsive, continuous conversation, where the software alternately speaks and listens, attentive to interruptions, much like a conference call with someone who loves to hear themselves talk. This part of the code is responsible for obtaining a response from the AI in a conversational manner. The get chat response function listens for a user message, updates the chat history, and retrieves an AI response, which it then streams in chunks. It checks whether a conversation interrupt event is set, like a virtual do not disturb sign, and if so, bails out early. It streams the response bit by bit for that live chatbot feel while checking for sentence boundaries. As complete sentences are formed, it tasks the system to generate corresponding audio, thereby maintaining pace with the delivered responses. If you imagine the AI as a snazzily dressed talk show host, this function seamlessly transitions it from one zesty retort to the next. This snippet handles the transcription of incoming audio data. The transcribe audio function leverages the hypothetical Grok API for automatic speech recognition, converting audio input into text. This step is key to capturing the user's verbal input in the conversation lifecycle. It processes the input audio data into a WAV format using an in-memory buffer, snappy and efficient like a skilled barista, avoiding the laggy overhead of file system operations. Once transcribed, the resulting text is fed back into the chat system to elicit an AI response, thus completing one full cycle of the conversation, while ensuring any currently processing tasks are appropriately interrupted to allow newer requests to have a say. Here, we delve into the core mechanics of queuing and audio processing. The process thread queue function continuously processes incoming audio data by spawning transcription tasks for concurrent processing, maintaining the pipeline's flow without bogging down on singular tasks. The record callback is integral to capturing audio input. It detects voice activity using WebRTC's VAD, filling the buffer while speech is detected, and triggering processing when silence prevails for a configured period. Upon detecting speech, it signals the need to potentially interrupt ongoing processes, because once you start talking, everyone else should listen, right? This callback helps manage how much audio data is buffered at a time and sends it for transcription once it considers a spoken phrase to be complete. In this final scene, the curtain rises on the main async function, which pulls together threads of recording, processing, and responding, all within an async event loop. It initializes necessary resources, sets up the audio input stream, and orchestrates the various tasks required to process audio input and playback. When the program runs, it starts listening for microphone input, managing both to capture and transcribe in real time. It gracefully handles interruptions, like if someone slams Control c ensuring that tasks are cleaned up properly. The main function simply serves to kick off this async workflow. This setup allows the system to continuously listen, process, and respond without stalling, ensuring you have a seamless experience. No AI is thinking too long moments, reflecting a competent, responsive voice assistant. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. And some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours, over 300 uh, projects as a patron. You will have access to all the code files, so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses and my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also, the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well. Right now, listen to me. I've been trying to toad, and you know, like I like toading. The fact that I can code and make things happen, but how do I do it? I mean, fast with AI. I'd heard about it. It's easy. So, um, I came across Thousand X Cursor course. And that's great, you know, it just made everything super silky smooth. It just it just worked, I'm, I'm telling you. Uh, Thousand X, your coding. 